And if you're getting ready to write a report or a scientific paper or something of that nature, there's a number of things that you can do to make your own life a lot easier and to make sure that your readers really understand and follow your journey through your communication piece. So what I've started with here are the general sections that you might have for a scientific report, title, abstract, keywords, intro, methods, results, discussion, conclusion, and references. So a really good way before you get writing is to get this set up and that will make your life super easy as you continue on. All right, so from top to bottom, let's go first of all with the title. It's super important to have a really catchy title. So one of the things that, that I work on is, is thinking about what is going to be the title that is going to grab the attention of, of your readers and also be memorable. So what we're working on here usually is the key message of your paper. It might be a question, it might be a how-to, or it might also be a result. Now, one of the things that, that I find super helpful when I'm creating titles for, for anything that I write is to use a headline analyzer like this one here. This one is free. There is a paid version, but I just use the free one. So I recommend trying this one out and seeing how you go with your headlines and try, try, to, try to make them something that will really entice your, your readers to read your work. Don't feel that you need to write the title at the very beginning. Often this is something that comes at the end. Have seven suggestions for titles, pass them around your colleagues, friends, teammates, and then come up with the one that's going, that resonates the most and is going to work the best. Abstract, also something that you do at the end. Keywords I want to talk about because this is something that's often neglected but is super, super important. So the keywords are things that will actually get indexed by search engines. So when you go to search for Google and you want people to see your paper or your communication piece, these keywords are really important. So you need to repeat some of the keywords that you're using here. They need to be repeated in the title. So otherwise, Google and other search engines can actually penalize you because it effectively looks like your title is clickbait if the words or some of those words that you have in your title are not repeated in your keywords and don't appear anywhere, anywhere else in your document as well. So you want some of the keywords to appear in your title and they absolutely should be sprinkled throughout your paper there as well. And also preferably in the headings too. All right, now let's look at the structure of the actual document here. So pretty boring at the moment. I've just used a standard font here and a size 11. Now what I want to do is to structure this that will really allow you to signpost through the document itself. So I'm actually going to start with introduction because that's usually the first numbered section that you work with. So I'm going to highlight this one and then what I want to do is I'm going to go up to these paragraph styles and I'm going to use this particular style here that goes through heading one, two, three, four, etc. So I now see that this is number one and intro. This is a lot bigger than what I want it to be. So I'm going to change that. I'm just going to drop all the way back down to my 11. I'm kind of happy with 11, but I do want it bold and I don't want this blue color. So I'm going to go back to black. So whatever you want your format to be, just, just get that the way you'd like it. And then come up here to your styles and right click on that and update that style to match that heading. So you'll see we've got that one there now. Now I'm going to do the same two methods. I'm going to apply heading one to each of these sections. And you'll then see that if you happen to add something else in here, so let's say, for example, oh, we don't need a discussion. We want to have a combined results and discussion. For example, we might do this. Um, you'll see that the numbers then reorganize themselves. So you don't have to be aware of this. Now, what also happens when you create these styles is if you go up to view and you can go to navigation pane, you'll see that they all automatically appear. Now, this is super helpful for you as you navigate through your document, particularly if it's a long document, to be able to jump between these individual sections. Now, in the introduction, you're going to have a bunch, bunch of text. Whatever that is, that's, that's your story about whatever it is that you're interested in writing about. And then the key thing at the end of your introduction, you're going to offer up what your aims and objectives are. So I'm just going to pop in a couple, one, a couple of objectives and an aim here, just as, as an example of what this is going to help with my structure now. So for example, the aim of this study is to create an amazing map of the Great Barrier Reef. To achieve this, we have the following objectives. So you have one aim and it always starts with two and then a verb. 
so to create, and then often three objectives. So these are the rungs in your ladder to achieve your aim. So three objectives, they also all start with two. So this one to curate data, stick it all together, and to design an appropriate color scheme, whatever those things are. Now this aim and these three objectives are super important because we want to see these mirrored throughout your document. So let's see how that actually works. We'll jump next to methods. So usually the first component of methods will be a study site, at least in, in my work here. So I'm gonna have a study site here and I'm now going to go back to here and I, I need this one to sit under methods. So I'm going to apply heading, uh, heading one point one here, which again, I don't like that font color or size or anything. So I'm gonna drop that back down to my 11 and black here and then update that style till I get my 2.1. My study site, then I'm going to have, let's just grab some fake text in here that's going to tell me something about my study site so we've got a bit of a bulk. And then almost always I will need a figure in here that's going to be a figure of my study site. So that allows me to show you another component of this structure here and that's the figure caption. So at this point, I don't even know what that figure looks like, but I'm still setting up my document to, to prepare me for success as I continue to fill this with the content. So what I'm going to do is go up to references and use the insert caption here. So it's automatically suggesting this is going to be figure one, and this is gonna be my study, my study site, blah, -dee blah, whatever that's gonna be and I'm gonna allow it to just be labeled figure, etc. So looking like that, I can again change the format of this to make sure that it's the right color, style, etc. I'm going to leave that for the moment though. But so now what you've seen is that I've inserted this, this figure and you'll see that it's auto numbered. Now this is really important because at the end of this sentence that I've got here, I want to cross-reference this. So you always want to make sure that when you've got a figure, it's cited in the preceding paragraph immediately. So I'm going to put double brackets in there and I'm going to go up to references and use the cross-reference button here. And as, as I do that, it's, it's asking me, what do I want to cross-reference? And I'm going to cross-reference a figure here. I don't want the entire caption. I just want the label and number. And I'm going to insert that there. Now, why this process is super important is because now if I realize, oh, actually I was going to have, a, I needed to have a figure in this place. So this, this spot here is automatically realizing that it's figure one, which means that becomes figure two. And if I right click on this one here, um, I can then go to update the field and it automatically cross references itself. So you don't end up with these mismatches of things that are cited but not figured and all of that sort of thing. Okay, so that's super important as you're going through that practice. All right, the next part of my methods, I want to bring your attention back to my objectives. So if my first objective is to curate all the data, then I need to have a matching method for that. So what I'm going to do here is to have my next subheading. So it might be called curating data, for example. And again, I don't even know what content I'm going to have in that just yet, but if I come over here, I know that it's a heading two. It pops up there, it automatically numbers at 2.2, which is under the 2.1 and under section two. So I know I'm gonna have that. Then I know that I must have sticking it all together. So my next one will be sticking together and my final method is designing a color scheme now what's important here when we make each of these subheadings is that we also see them pop over here so it's really, really easy for someone who's evaluating your work to see, okay, now they said that they were going to have this aim and these three objectives, they make sense as the rungs on the ladder to achieve that aim. Now what I want to see as a reviewer or, or a colleague or as you like, I want to see that there's an associated method to how you're going to curate the data. 
So if it says to curate the data here, I jump over to methods and, oh, look, there's a section that tells me all about how that's going to happen. The objective is to stick it all together. How does that happen? Oh, there must be an associated method. And then what's even more important is that these things are actually mirrored in your results and discussion because if you have a an objective you must have a method to achieve that objective and then you must have a result based on what that method is that you did and all I did was I copied these sections so the control c and I pasted them down here and you'll see that the numbering is all correct it's automatically updated itself to be section three so I've got a 3.1 which, which is, matches here through as well. So these are all matching up and as someone who's reading your paper can then really understand what you were trying to do, how you were trying to do it and what the result was. And then they'll feel more that your work is more trustworthy because you've done what you said that you were going to do. So this is just a really, really simple way that you can structure this document before you even have any content at all. So you can basically see that I've written the first 189 words of this particular document, whatever this paper is, and I haven't actually even done any work, but I've set myself up for success and then making sure that it's all structured well and it's really easy for me to continue to navigate and work through my own work as much as it is for my readers to be able to do that as well.